Uh, right behind me, um, you can see here, uh, this is our IBM Quantum System 1. This is a model of one of our real quantum computers. For years and years, we've been using our classical computers, our classical bits, our zeros and ones, to provide every part of computation, to send emails, to do video conferencing, to save data. Now, a good way to imagine this is a coin. You can imagine a coin on the table as a classical bit. It is either heads or tails. It is either in a state zero or one. Imagine a quantum bit as being when we flick a coin in the air. So when the coin is in the air and it's spinning, it is simultaneously zero and one at the same time. That's until we catch it and measure it and reveal whether our qubit is in state zero or one. And that's exactly how quantum computers work. That's exactly how our qubits work. We put them in a spinning state between zero and one. We entangle some of those spinning states together. Then we look at the system and we measure it. And then the system becomes a state of absolute zero and ones, just like we have in the classical world. And being in that state, being in the state where our coins are spinning in the air, that opens up possibilities for us to evaluate and for us to search multiple different and more relationships between our data. And that gives us the potential to solve problems in a completely different way. Now this might be being able to solve a problem faster, more accurately, or maybe more efficiently or cost effectively. Now right at the bottom, you can see um, there is a quantum chip. This chip almost looks sort of like a SIM card at the bottom of our machine. And that's where our quantum computation actually occurs. Our qubits are at a temperature of 15 millikelvin. Now that's much, much colder than out of space. Now all this sort of stuff above in the chandelier, a lot of it is for cooling our qubits down to a low temperature. The reason they have to do that is because we take advantage of superconducting effects to create our quantum computer, but also to provide microwave pulses and waves to our quantum bits. That's the way that we actually perform operations to our qubits.